Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak. And shalom to Kol Yisrael. Do we rock Yahweh for another opportunity? Another day he has given us. He has breathed his breath of life. His high into Yisrael. And what should we do with that Yisrael but to give it back unto him? And in praises. Extolling his name. Speaking songs and tehillim unto ourselves and unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. That's what it speaks of when it says that we should sing unto Yahweh a new song. Every breath that he gives you is new. Hallelujah. It is life that he gives you, Yisrael. So in that same breath, we should give back unto Yahweh newness of life. Hallelujah. As we extol his name, as we lift him up. Hallelujah. As we speak his Torah and his misfah. And as we stand strong in the comfort of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Again, we brought you all to listen to my Via live stream. I do want to start this message tonight and then uh, give it a turn somewhat if we get that far. But I want to talk about being troubled or the troubling of Yahweh. Some years past, I have uh, taught or preached this message, however you want to put it, Yisrael. So I want to somewhat revisit that. There are things, Yisrael, that should trouble us. It calls us to think, to recollect, but there are also things that should not trouble us, Yisrael. But one thing we should be troubled is by the troubling of Almighty Yahweh, his warning, as he reproves us, as he continually has to chastise us, Yisrael. Do we shema? Do we listen to what Yahweh is saying in this last hour? He's not speaking to the world nor to the masses, but only to the chosen elect yes. that he has picked out of this world, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's not for everyone that may be listening to understand this tonight, yes. okay. but those that have the ears to hear, yes. let them hear what the Ruach HaKodesh is saying yes. unto the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Hallelujah. there are things that we say and we don't Judge the words as we should that come forth out of my mouth. We say things in foolishness, things in haste, and that should trouble us, Israel. We make promises. We make uh, uh, vows that we break, and those kind of things should trouble us, Israel. So if you would turn with me to uh, Yoshana, chapter 6, verse 15, Mm -hmm. Yahshua. Chapter 6, verse 15. I want to begin reading. Yahushua ben Nun. Chapter 6, verse 15. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I do want to make this statement tonight that we should understand when Yahweh, if he causes the mind of the rasha or the wicked, to be troubled sure. about times and seasons. That's right. Should not the house of Israel, should we not be informed in that same matter, Israel? Yeah. Yeah. Our eyes should be open, yeah. our ears should be clean, yeah. that we can hear what the Ruach is saying, Israel. Yeah. Because in a physical uh, thing, there's always a spiritual lesson to be yeah. learned from it, Israel. So let me begin here, and I will uh, get back to that statement I just made. Hallelujah. And it came to pass on the seventh day, they arose early, about the dawning of the day, and could pass the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day, it says, they could pass the city seven times. Hallelujah. We should, Israel, take what Yahweh has charged us and has already given us, Yisrael. But that's the only way we're able to do that if we obey, if we obey Almighty Yahweh. Let me read on. And it came to pass that at the seventh time, when the Kohen blew the shofar, that Yahushua said to the people, Shout, for Yahweh has given you the city. Yes, he has. Hallelujah. Yahweh has given us victory, Yisrael. 
over every situation, over every circumstance, but we must obey his guidelines. We must walk in his mishvah and his Torah. And the condition here would have walked around this wall a year ago, just two times it would not work. They had to walk around the wall seven times that Yahweh has commanded. And then they had to shout with the voice of Teshua, with victory. Hallelujah. Yahweh has commanded us the same thing in this hour, Yisrael. No matter what situation or circumstances may uh, impose itself upon us, knowing that Yahweh has already given us Teshua, he's already given us Yahshua HaMashiach, all we have to do is just shout. All we have to do is walk in the Torah as we, sh as we should. Hallelujah. Let us move on. Verse 17. And it says this, and the city shall be accursed. Mm -hmm. And it says, and a thing devoted. Come on, son. That's what that is. Yeah. That thing that is, um, has been destroyed. Mm -hmm. That's what a curse represents. Wiping out, utterly. Sure. Sure. Cleansed from the palate. Sure. Nothing left, Israel. Yahweh, he has paid the path for us, Yisrael, to walk in. Did he not part the Red Sea? Was there anything in the way of Yisrael? No, Were they uh, caught in the muck and the mire? No, no, everything was cleared away. Because Yahweh had given them the victory, Yisrael. Yeah. He said, either it, in verse 17, and all that are therein. There's nothing that will be able to withstand or was able to withstand Yisrael. He says to Yahweh, only Rahab the harlot shall stay alive. You know that there were messengers that went in, the spies that went in. And it was this harlot that was able, by the instruction and by the wisdom, hide them. And to give them even certain points and circuits of the city, Israel. So Yahweh said, reserve this harlot, this harlot Rahab. Only she would be left and all that are with her in the house because she hid the messengers that that were sent. Verse 18. And you and any wise keep yourselves from, it says, the accursed thing. Yeah. Should those things trouble us? Yes, right, y'all. Yahweh has given us his Torah. He has given us his commandments. He told them he has told us to go in and to take that which. He has commanded us and given us the power to do so. But yet there are things he tells us not to partake of and not to touch. And things that we should destroy, Israel, even the lust of the flesh. We should impel our flesh, our desires. They should be impelled daily, Israel. He didn't say frontalize with it. He didn't say fellowship with it. Because we know anything that is of the flesh, it is enmity, and it is contrary against Almighty Yahweh. So those things that are flesh, should we partake of those things? After Yahweh has commanded us not to touch? Those are the things that should trouble us, Yisrael. Why? Because we partake of those things daily. We lay hands on those things daily, Yisrael. And Yahweh commanded us not to. He said, and you in any wise, he said, keep yourselves from the accursed thing. Unless you make yourselves a curse. Do we think if we go and we touch those things that are cursed? Those things that have been separated from Almighty Yahweh. Of no worth. They have been destroyed. There's no value in it, Yisrael. Do we think if we touch those things that we're not going to be defiled? Is it the thing in itself that defiles us, Yisrael? Or is it the transgression of the commandments of Almighty Yahweh? It's the transgression of the commandment. It's because Yahweh said, don't touch. And yet we, we cross over that. We bound over the Torah. And then we touch those unclean things. And we sin before Almighty Yahweh. He said, lest you make yourselves a curse when you take of the accursed thing. And make the camp of Israel a curse. You know, that troubles me, Israel. If I leave from the presence of the condition, yes. and amongst the condition, I, I, I'm seemingly Sadiq, I'm righteous. Yes. Come on. And then while I'm out amongst the world, when I cannot be seen, 
that I do something that is wicked, that is totally against the Torah, that even brings a, a lash against the house. That's a testimony against you, against Yisrael. And that's for any of us, Yisrael, whether we are here in the Bayat of Teshua or you that are listening by video or via live stream. Those type things should trouble us. Even the thought of that troubles me, to go out and sin against my Ishaw, against my family, against my house, against my Zakain, Yisrael. Even the thought of that should trouble us, Yisrael. He said, but when you take of that accursed thing and make the camp of Yisrael accursed, you know, if I would do that, any of us, yeah. and we bring that back into the house of Yisrael, yeah. we bring in this accursed thing. Yeah. That should trouble us, Yisrael. Yeah. There's certain things we should not bring in, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we know what they are. Yes. Hallelujah. But yet we think we can hide those things. Yeah. Don't you know those things that are hidden? Mm -hmm. They're going to be hollowed or made known among the house top. Because Yahweh, he's not going to allow anything to circumvent his house, Yisrael. Yeah. You will be found out. Yeah. He said, if you make the camp of Yisrael a curse, and you what? You trouble it. Yes. You trouble the house. Yes. We go out and commit those things, Yisrael, and we come back. That troubles the house. Good job. It troubles the ruach of the place. Yeah. Hallelujah. Especially Azar came. Hallelujah. Every step that we take yeah. has to be taken with, with earnestness. And we should watch ourselves yeah. as we walk Israel. Yeah. Verse 19. Yeah. He said, but all the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron are Kodesh unto Almighty Yahweh. He said, they shall come into the treasury of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. Did not he command that specifically? Yeah. The vessels? Like those things of gold, those things of silver? Did I not talk about that last time, Yisrael, y'all? The vessels? Yes, sir. There's not no unclean thing that should come mm -hmm. and before the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Were well, we not once unclean? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. But even Yahweh himself, yes. he made an offering for us, a Zabah yeah. and Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. So we are no longer unclean. We are clean, Yisrael. Yeah. So we're able to come into the house of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me not venture off of this. Hallelujah. But he said, those things you bring into the house, the vessels of silver, of gold, and of brass, and of iron, those things are Kodesh. Yeah. He said, so the people, they shouted when the Kohen blew on the shofar, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the shofar. And the people shouted with a great shout yeah. that the walls, they fell yeah. flat. Yeah. Yeah. There was nothing left standing, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Even the enemy, yes. when we shout, yes. when the voice of Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach, yeah. he comes with the shout of, of the ark Melachim, Yisrael, yes. that all the walls, yes. all those yes. things that seemingly hinder us, Yisrael, yes. they shall fall flat to the ground. Yes. There's nothing that shall oppose us or stand in our way, Yisrael. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, so that the people went into the city, Every man straight before him, and they took the city. Yes, and they utterly destroyed all. Let's say all. Yes, sir. Was there anything left? No. With the Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach, when it was shed for the house of Yisrael, mm -hmm. even for the old lamb, it took away all. Yes. Cold. Yes, there was nothing left. Yes. The pure offering of Yahshua HaMashiach. Oh, yes. It took away all the sin, Yisrael. Oh. It said that all the things that were utterly destroyed and all that was in the city, both man, both women, yeah. both old, yeah. it says the ox, yeah. the sheep, and the ass, they destroyed all that with the edge of the sword. Yeah. So should we, Yisrael, we have been made new in Yahshua HaMashiach yeah. and understanding that we no longer our own, yeah. should we try to hide or carry excess baggage? In the presence of Almighty Yahweh, it is a stench, and it is a sin before Almighty Yahweh, and it should trouble us, Yisrael. Those things they trouble the house of Yisrael, it troubles the camp of Yisrael. So we should destroy all those things, Yisrael. The emotionalism, those emotions that are led by the flesh that causes us 
to turn our backs on, on Almighty Yahweh. We need to destroy those things, Israel. A lying tongue. Those things need to be destroyed, Israel. Hallelujah. Our idols, those things that we hold high above the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, those things has to be destroyed, Israel. Has to be destroyed. Can no remnants of it be left in the lives on the hearts of Israel? He said, but Yeshua said to the two men that had spied out the country, go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she has, as I had sworn to you. And the young men that were the spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother, her brother and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Yisrael. Verse 24. And they burnt the city with fire. Hallelujah. With the word. The Torah. Yahweh commanded them to burn everything. We should burn everything with the Torah, Yisrael. It should be a burning fire within the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That it consume the dross. That it consume every unclean thing. Yes. We cannot let the fire go out, Israel. Yes. We cannot even let it burn a low flame. Yes. But it should continually burn hot. Yes. You must have a hot fire yes. to purify gold. Yes. A lukewarm fire won't do it. Hallelujah. Silver, the heat has to be intense. Yes. For it to melt down. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And we should do the same, Israel. We must melt down before Almighty Yahweh. Yes. We must bow. Yes. We must kneel before the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein. It says only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and iron. Those things that Yahweh commanded them to bring it to the buyer. And they put it into the treasury of the house of Yisrael. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in that same me- measure, Yisrael, by the fire of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, we should allow those things that are not of Almighty Yahweh to be purged out. Purge, purge, purge. We should allow his word to bring us low. That's what happened with, with gold. When it's in a solid state and the heat is put to it, it's brought low. It's brought flat, Yisrael. Yeah. And that way all the impurities can rise to the surface, Yisrael. Yeah. We should allow the fire and the trying of Yahweh yes, to try us, to burn us, to purify us, Israel. Hallelujah. That all those things that are not of him will be purged out. That is very important, Israel. Is, Yah, is he going to allow anything that offends him into his milku, into his kingdom, Israel? No, he is not. So we should search our hearts tonight. Search it deeply and find those things by the Torah that are displeasing, those actions that are displeasing before Almighty Yahweh, that we don't bring an offense before him, that we don't resist him, and that we don't cause a burden even unto the house of Israel. Hallelujah. I don't want to be a burden to the house. And neither should you, Israel. So we should do all that is within our power. What's within our power? The Torah is in our power, Israel. Yahweh has given it unto us yes. that we may purify our way and make our way straight. Yes. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Turn with me to chapter 7 mm-hmm. of the same book. Chapter 7, verse 4 and 5. I want to read. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Yes, Hallelujah. We must destroy all those things, Israel. We can't leave nothing alive. That, that defends, that comes against Almighty Yahweh. It says, So there went up there of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Aya. And the men of Aya smote about six men, 36 men. For they chased them from before the gates unto Shabirim. And smote them in the going down. Wherefore, the hearts of the people, they melted. They melted melted before them as water, Israel. Did I not talk about before? 
concerning the fire and the heat. How those things melt down, Yisrael. Even the heart of the wicked, Yisrael. They melt with fear because seeing those things that are coming upon the world, Yisrael, it troubles them. Should those things also quicken us? Should they trouble us, Yisrael? Understanding the judgments of Almighty Yahweh, that we make preparation, that we make ready for the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. It says their hearts even shall fail them for fear, Yisrael. And we see that. Even the commerce or the monies of this nation, yeah. as it's being brought low, the wealth is being brought low. Yeah. We see how even the men, their hearts are failing them but for fear. They're afraid of losing their, heart, their homes. Yeah. They're afraid of losing the little bit of wealth that they have. Yeah. And they put their hope yeah. and all their trust in those things yeah. and not in Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. We should put our hope and our trust in Yahweh. Yes, yeah. right, y'all. Hallelujah. And we should see beyond what the wicked see. If they're troubled in this time, then we should be able to look beyond and see what Yahweh is doing. That we are understanding of the times and of the season, Yisrael, and we are making ready for the appearance and for the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach. For we are in the young Akharis. We are in the last days. We are in the last times, Yisrael. So we should prepare ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shall allow the fiery trials of our Emunah to be tried, Israel. Yes, that we'll be ready when Yahshua HaMashiach, when he comes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let us back up to Bereshith. Genesis chapter 49, verse 1. Right. I want to begin reading. Verse 1 to verse 4. I want to show us something here, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in chapter 49, verse 1, And Yaakov, he called to his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I might tell you that which shall befall you in the Yom Akari, in the last days. Should we be attentive to Yisrael? Yes. Or what the Ruach HaKodesh is saying. Yeah. Was this not an Avat Yaakov yeah. as a father? Mm-hmm. Having concern for his sons sure. and wisdom that they did not yet have. That he was able to foretell and tell them yes. what would come upon them, Yisrael. Yeah. He said, gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Verse 2. He says, gather yourselves together and shema." Hear, you sons of Yaakov, and hearken to Yisrael, your father. Should we be observant, Yisrael? Should we take heed unto, even unto this very warning concerning the last days? He said, Reuben, he said, you are my firstborn. He said, you are my might. And the beginning of my regenerative strength. He said, you are the excellence, see, of dignity mm-hmm. and of power. Yeah. Are we not the firstborn yeah. of Yahshua HaMashiach? Oh, yeah. We must understand this, Yisrael. Yeah. You know, we cannot be weak yeah. understanding where our birth comes from and our birthright, Yisrael. Yeah. For we are the strength of Almighty Yahweh, yeah. whether we realize that or not. Yeah. We are his strength. We must stand in the Torah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. But he says this even in verse 4. Yeah. He said, unstable as water. Sure. Listen to that, Yisrael. Yeah. Should that trouble us? Yes. Yes. This is talking about the house of Yisrael. Yeah. Sure. This is the birth. This is our lineage. Yeah. We should be the strength of Almighty Yahweh. We should not be watered down. We should not allow the things that are compassionate upon the old land. We, 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 we shouldn't respond like they are responding. Yeah. But we should take heed to what's going on yeah. and the wisdom yes, and the things that the Torah speaks yeah. that we will know the right things that we should do to make preparation. Yeah. We should not allow our imuna or our strength to become as water, Israel. Yeah. Seeing what is coming upon this, this world. 
But we should make the preparations that is necessary, that we should be able to stand as the strength, as we should, Israel. The firstborn is always the one that is the strength. He receives the, the wealth and the riches, Israel. There are two him. So is it to the house of Israel. Yahweh, he has not left us without Israel. He has given us great wealth and great riches. He has given us the armaments that we can stand against even the fiery darts of the enemy, Israel. Even to stand against the will of our own flesh and our own desires, Israel. So he said here in verse 4, unstable as water. He said, you should not excel because you went up into your father's bed. Then defile you it when he went up to my couch. Do we find ourselves defiling yes, uh, the bed yes. or the place of Almighty Yahweh? Yes. Where we should find comfort and rest, Israel. Yes. Where we should find our abode. Yes. yes, there are many ways this could be translated, if you will, Absolutely. or can be spoken, Israel. Yes. But we should understand the comfort of Almighty Yahweh. We cannot defile the bed, Israel. Yes. We cannot find, defile the place of abode. Even the house of Yahweh, the buyer, is that not a place of rest? A place of dwelling? We should be able to come and find comfort in the midst of trials and rest in the midst of tribulation, Israel. But yet, if we don't do the things that Torah commands us, and if we walk in the spirit uh, that Reuben pursued in, being weak as water, can nothing stand upon water, Israel? Unstable. Anything moves water, Israel. But we should be planted and sure upon the solid rock of Yahshua HaMashiach. Why? Because we are the strength of Almighty Yahweh. We are his inheritance. We are the firstborn of Yahshua HaMashiach. So, in that meeting, do we receive even all the wealth and the riches? Sure. Hallelujah. We have been grafted in. Hallelujah. Through Yahshua HaMashiach. So let us stand strong. Let us stand assured, Yisrael, in the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to step back, uh, back to Yahshua, chapter 7, verse 19. Yahshua ben Nun, chapter 7, verse 19. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then I want to move over to the second part of this message, Yisrael. We should be troubled in these last days, not by what the wicked are doing, but knowing that there are things in our lives, Yisrael, that we have not made the right preparations for. Any kind of soldier or army must make preparation before ending to, entering into the battle of the fight, Yisrael. You must be prepared. There cannot be any doubt in our minds, Israel, that we are lacking anything. We cannot forget the sword, the two-edged sword, which is the word of Almighty Yahweh. We must make sure that our loins are girded about with truth, that our feet are, are, are not naked, but they are wrapped tight with the reassurance of Yahshua HaMashiach, that every step is sure, that our souls not wear out, Israel. Just as Israel, as they traversed through the wilderness, did their clothes wear out on them? Did their shoes or their sandals wear out, Israel? Hallelujah. Yahweh provided. And just as in that time, Yahweh, he provides all that we need, even in this hour, Israel, for us to overcome all things. Hallelujah. And it says, And Yahshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray you, honor to Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of Israel. And make confession unto him. Yeah. And tell me now what you have hid or what you have done and hide it not from me. Yeah. What are we hiding, Israel? Uh, yeah. Have we partaken of the accursed thing? Yeah. Have we took that which Yahweh had commanded us not to take of, yeah. partake of, and we have hid it into the camp, Israel, yeah. in our hearts, yeah, in the bayah or the bed yeah. of Almighty Yahweh? It says, Edgar answered, uh, answered Yahushua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of Israel, and thus have I done. Verse 21. 
He said, I saw among the spoils, it says, a goodly garment. It was a precious garment. Very rare. Priceless. And he partook of that. He said, a goodly Babylonian garment. And 200 shackles of silver. And a wedge of gold. And 50, uh, at 50 shackles weight. And he said... Then I coveted them. He coveted them. Should we covet those things, Israel? Right, Should we envy the things of the world, what they're doing, what they're partaking of, their reveling, their game saying, their parties, their Super Bowls, the baseball games? We should have no part in those kind of things, Israel. Right, but yet, if we don't watch ourselves, We'll find ourselves coveting and wanting those kind of things. Desire to to see what that team is going to do against this team. To the point where we're caught up in those kind of things, Israel. And not being caught up in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. So because he beheld those things in his lair, and he lusted in his heart, it said, he coveted them, and he took them. He took them. And behold... They are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent. That alone should let us know. And even he should know that it was wrong. Why? Because he hid it. Because if it was right for him to have, it would have been out in the open. It would have been put into the body of of Almighty Yahweh. See, he knew that that thing was wicked. He even confessed that that was wicked. But yet he still partook of it, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We should not do that, Yisrael. When we know that it's wrong to do a thing, and we go forth and do it, yet still, it is a sin before Almighty Yahweh. And it's a sin that you know and that you did it, Israel. And what does that cause? It causes even a leanness in your own nephesh. It causes a drought in your own heart. And even when you bring that cursed thing, whether it's in your heart, in your mind, or it's a physical thing, You bring a curse. You bring something that is very wicked unto the house of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Yahweh, he will find it out, Yisrael. He He said he hid him in the earth in the midst of the tent and the silver under it. Mm -hmm. So Yahushua sent messengers and they ran to the tent. And behold, it was hid in the tent, the silver and everything that was under it, Yisrael. And they took them out into, and they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Yahushua. And to all the children of Yisrael and laid them before the presence of Almighty Yahweh. And Yahushua said, and all the Yisrael, and all Yisrael with him to Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver and the garment. And the wedge of gold. And his sons and his daughters. Now did his sons and his daughters today, they might not even knew what he had done. Had no knowledge of what had taken place. See, we must understand the seriousness, even in this hour, Yisrael, of our actions and what we do. He said his sons and his daughters, the little ones, middle-aged teenagers, even the grown adults. Not only that, his oxen, his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had, all he possessed, Yisrael. All that he possessed. The oxen, the sheep. Whatever belonged unto him. They brought it all. And they brought them to the valley of Echor. And Yahushua said, why have you troubled us? Was not the house of Israel our trouble? Yeah. Did not the Ruach detect sure. that which was troubling the house? Yeah. Yeah. And then pinpointed it was even the sun mm-hmm. that had brought the cursed thing into the house of Israel. Yeah. Israel. Yeah. We must be careful, Israel. Yeah. Yes, See, even his mind, his leg was unstable mm-hmm. as water. Sure. There was nothing sure in his leg. No doubt about it. The commandments was not sure in his heart. He did not fear the judgments of Almighty Yahweh. 
That's why he did what he did, Yisrael. Yeah. He said, why have you troubled us? He said, in this matter, Yahweh shall trouble you this day. The judgments of Almighty Yahweh. And all Yisrael stoned them, stoned him with stones and burnt them with fire. And after they had stoned them with stones, in verse 26 it says, And they raised over him a great heap of stones even to this day. So Yahweh turned from the fierceness of his anger, his af, his anger, his indignation. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor, even unto this day, Israel. Yeah. So do we think we're going to escape the judgments of Almighty Yahweh? When we touch those things of the world? We lay our hands upon the wicked? Don't you know when you do that, that's a type of anointing? We shouldn't lay our hands suddenly just on any man, Israel. It don't matter who it is. Your mama, your father, your brothers, your sisters. Those that have even walked in this way that deny mm -hmm. the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, yeah. the power of Almighty Yahweh and His very Torah, mm -hmm. yet we so easily want to embrace and, and lay hands upon those things, Israel. Yeah. Touch those things of the world that are unclean. Right. It should not be in the house of Israel. Yeah. We bring a curse not only to ourselves and our household, yeah. but even into the camp of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. It should trouble us, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're talking about the troubling of Almighty Yahweh. We should be troubled by our sins. Yeah. And those things that we do, even knowing in Israel, it should not be before the house of Israel. There remain if no more offering. When you go forth in that matter, Israel. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us move on to Judges chapter 11, verse 29. Shoftim, Judges chapter 11, verse 29. Hallelujah. That's why we should continually search our love, just right, y'all, for the leaven, for the unclean things. We should allow the Torah of Almighty Yahweh to, as, as our ox said, ox shimmery, we should stir up those things. The Torah should stir up our pure mind by way of remembrance, just right, y'all. That we not commit these atrocities or these sins before Almighty Yahweh and into the house of Yisrael. Yes. Judges chapter 11, verse 29. It said, Then the Ruach of Yahweh came upon Jephah, uh, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Misseh of Gilead. And from Misseh and Gilead, he passed over the children of Ammon. And Jephthah, yeah, he vowed and vowed unto Yahweh and said, If you will fall, fall deliver the children of Ammon into my hands. Without fail, without any kind of uh, thing being our way that we should fail in this battle. Verse 31. He says, Then it shall be that whatsoever comes forth out of the doors of my house, to meet me, I will return in Shalom from the children of Ammon. He says, shall surely be Yahweh's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Mm -hmm. He said, whatever comes out yeah. of my house, Israel. Right, Don't you know that whatever comes out of our left, out of our mouth, mm -hmm. as I have said at the beginning of this, we should be careful what we vow and what we say, Israel. Right, because those things that come out of our mouth, Yisrael, yeah, a lot of things cannot be retracted. It can't be retracted. So that's why we must guard what we say, what we speak. Not only that, but what comes into the body, even through the mouth. Through our ears, what we hear, we should guard ourselves carefully, Yisrael. Yeah. Let me read on. So Jephthah, he passed over the children of Ammon to fight against them. And Yahweh, he delivered them into his hands. And he smote them for Aurora, even till he came unto Menes. He said, even 20 cities. 
to the plain of the vineyards of Abel Karaman with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Yeah. Did not Yahweh give them victory yeah. to overcome? Yeah. And, and Jepheth, yeah, he came unto Mizah to his house. And behold, his daughter came out to meet him with the timbrels and with the dance, with rejoicing. She was happy. Out of the house of Israel, out of his house, Israel. And she was his only child. His only child, Israel. He said, Beside her, he neither had son nor any other daughters. And it came to pass that when he saw her, that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter. He said, You have brought me very low. He said, You are one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto Yahweh. He said, I cannot go back. Yes. Hallelujah. We have opened our mouths before Almighty Yahweh. We have made a vow unto Almighty Yahweh. That we will walk in his Torah. That we will walk in his Mishvah. That we will obey all of his commandments, Yisrael. And because we have spoken of those things, Yisrael, by those very same words, Yahweh, he shall judge us. Hallelujah. He said that he cannot go back. No. Neither can we go back, Israel. No, Did he not vow that whatever comes forth yes, yes. out of his body or out of his house, that he will offer it before Almighty Yahweh? Yes. Did he do it? Yes. He had to. He could not go back, Israel. Verse 36. And she said to him, my father, he said, if you have opened your mouth unto Almighty Yahweh, do unto me according to that which has proceeded out of your mouth. Don't you see the understanding and the wisdom? Even in this, this, this daughter of his, Israel, he had to be a man that walked upright, even for this kind of wisdom to be installed into this daughter, into his children, Israel. He said, for as much as Yahweh has taken vengeance for you of your enemies, even the children of Ammon. So he had to abide by what he said, Israel. So by the same breath, Israel, we must abide by what we say unto Almighty Yahweh, what we vow unto Almighty Yahweh. Has he not vowed unto us, Israel? Has he not given his word unto us? Has he failed in any way, in any shape or any fashion, Israel? No, he hasn't. But yet we have fallen short of the mark and of that high calling. That's why I brought Yahweh every day for Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Hallelujah. For without him, Yisrael, there would be no hope for us. There would be no hope for Yisrael. We could not stand in these last and evil days. Hallelujah. Because of what he done and his blood and his offering, Yisrael, we are able to come before the throne of Almighty Yahweh boldly. Hallelujah. And that's not to say that we continually walk in sin. No. But there is one that stands in proxy for us, Yisrael. There is one that stands in the gap for us, Yisrael. That we, if we will confess our faults unto Almighty Yahweh and unto one another, Yisrael, that he, there is a way through Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. I want to move forward some, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Let's go to Tehillim. Tehillim chapter 42, verse, verse 1. Tehillim chapter 42, verse 1. It says here, to the chief musician, Michel, for the kings of Korah, as the deer pants after the water brooks, so pants my nephesh, my soul, after you, Almighty Yahweh. He says, my soul, my soul thirsts for Yahweh and for my living Abba. When shall I come and appear before Yahweh? He said, my tears have been my meat day and night. Why they continually say to me, where is your sovereign ruler? Yes, yes. 
verse 4. He said, when I remember these things, I pour out my nephesh in me, for I have gone without multitude. I went with them to the house of Almighty Yahweh, and with the voice of joy and praise, and with the multitude that kept the Kodesh feast. Verse 5. He says, why are you cast down then, my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Do we have that kind of a feeling even in this hour, Yisrael, y'all? Being cast low? Weak? He says, hope you in Yahweh. He said, for I shall yet praise him. For he, I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. He said, O Yahweh, my almighty, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember you from the land of Jordan and of the Hamorites, Hamonites, and from the hill of Mizar. He says, deep calls to deep at the noise of your water spouse. All your waves and your billows are gone over me, has overcome me. He said, Yahweh will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, his song, it should be with me. And my prayer to the Almighty of my life. I will say unto Yahweh, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Now listen to this. He said, with he said, as with a sword in my bones, he said, my enemies, they reproach me. While they yet say unto me, where is Yahweh, your almighty? Is that not what the wicked ones say unto us, Israel, y'all? They don't see what Yahweh is doing in the Bible, Israel, y'all. So they continue to mock us. They continue to scorn even the name of almighty Yahweh. But yet Yahweh, he shall have his victory. We should find comfort even in him underneath the shadow of his wing, Israel. And we should not be cast down. Because it is Yahweh that, that lifts us up. It is Yahweh that brings us through. Do not talk about the walls of Jericho. Do they not come down, Israel? Because Yahweh, he was in control of all things. And Yahweh, he is still in control of all things. Verse 11. He said, why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope you in Yahweh. We should hope in Yahweh. There's nothing else we can put our trust in, Israel. There's nothing else we should have comfort in. There's no other foundation that should stand sure, Israel. So our left, our nephesh, our heart should not fail us, Israel. We should stand strong. We should not be weak as water. We shall abide in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And we shall overcome by the Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach. He says, for I shall yet praise him. Do we praise Yah? We should praise Yahweh, Yisrael Yah. No matter what comes our way. We should praise him. No matter what darts the enemy may throw at us, Yisrael Yah. We should Barak Almighty Yahweh. Did not Eo continually Barak Almighty Yahweh? Did not he continue to bring an offering before him? Even in all that he went to in those chapters, those first one, two, and third chapter of Eo, all that he went to through, he did not curse Almighty Yahweh. And he still yet Barak Almighty Yahweh. So it says here to hear that we said, For yet I shall praise Yahweh, I shall praise him. Who is the help of my countenance? He is the health of our countenance, Israel. Yes, is. Our countenance should not be brought low. No. Yes. That's one thing about fear. You can see that in the countenance of a man. Yes. It makes itself known mm-hmm. by the eyebrows and by the expression. Yes. His mouth being open. Yes. His eyes wide. Mm-hmm. That's all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But yet our countenance should be one of reassurance. Yes. One of strength. Mm-hmm. Knowing that we have already overcome everything and have overcome the enemy. We have overcome this flesh. 
We have overcome every trial through Yahshua HaMashiach. Why? Because he has overcome. He has overcome the world, Yisrael. He has overcome sin. Hallelujah. He said, who is the hell of my countenance and my sovereign ruler? Hallelujah. So our countenance should not be cast down. We should not be worried about a thing, Israel. Yet we should understand the times. But it should not trouble us as it troubles the world, Israel. We should take heed unto what's taking place. But yet understanding by the, by the wisdom and by the knowledge that Yahweh has given us through his Torah, the things that are taking place, that we make ourselves ready. Hallelujah. There are many that talks about the famine that shall come in the land. We have heard they talk about storing up canned goods, drying things, freezing things, buy gold, buy silver. None of those things are going to preserve us, Yisrael. As we've been hearing, Yisrael, none of those things shall preserve us. Only one thing shall preserve us, and that is the word of Almighty Yahweh. That is Yahshua HaMashiach. But yet there is a famine. That we as the house of Israel, yes. we are in. Yes, we are. And it's not by the lack of food mm-hmm. or not having enough water. Yes, right. It is the Torah yes. of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Should we be troubled? Sure, we should be yes. troubled. Yes. Should that make us sharper? Yes. Or should we be at ease in Zion? Yes, you recall me making a statement how Yahweh even troubles, or he troubles the wicked man? Yes. Why does he do that? We should understand why he does that, Israel. Yes, yes. We see it all around us, the trouble of the nations, mm-hmm. as they uh, are reeling back and forth. Nothing's sure. A- nothing's concrete. Mm-hmm. You listen to the news media, and you think there's a, a little array of hope. Yes. They feed that to the people, mm-hmm. and then they take it away. The stock market should not be our hope, Yisrael. Right. The investment should not be our hope. Yes, okay. We should invest in the things that are above. Yes. The things that are high in the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. Right. Yeah. We should lay up our treasures there where moth and rust cannot corrupt, right. Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's where our hope is. Not in stocks, not in bonds. Yeah. Not in those things, Yisrael. Yeah. So if you would turn me to Bereshith, Genesis chapter 41. Verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's talking about how Yahweh troubled Pharaoh. By a dream that he could not interpret. And it troubled him. It worried him. He sought for his soothsayers and his seers and his prophets. But there was only one man that was able to answer the dream. Hallelujah. What are our dreams? What are our aspirations, Yisrael? Don't you know it's only Yahshua HaMashiach that is our answer for everything, Yisrael? And it is Yahshua HaMashiach that is our deliverance, even in time of famine. That is through the Torah of Almighty Yahweh that has been made flesh. That we are able to overcome and to endure Yisrael, even the famine. Why? Because Yahweh has made a way through him. And I'm going to show you an example of this in this chapter, Genesis chapter 41, verse 1. But let me begin reading here. Hallelujah, Yahweh. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh, he dreamed. And behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kin, that's cattle, and fat-fleshed. There was fat, there was healthy, they were robust, and they fed in the meadow. And behold, seven other kin came out after them out of the river. And these cattle, they were ill-favored. They were not lovely to behold. They were sickly looking. They were drawn up and leaned flesh. And they stood by the other king upon the brink of the river. So as I'm reading this, we can envision this, Yisrael. 
Cattle that is fat, that is healthy. We look at our cattle, they're fat. They're healthy, they're strong. And yet I have seen even the example of those that are sick. They're, they're, they're drawn up, you can see their ribs. Their hip bones, they protrude out. They don't seem to have the strength or the luster of, of the cattle when they are sick. But listen to what happens here. It says, and the ill-favored and lean flesh kin did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kin. Yeah. So Pharaoh, he awoke. Yeah. Let me step through this a little bit step by step, Israel. Yahweh, he has given us his mishvah and his Torah. But we as a people, Yisraeli, we should not allow those things that are the weak and beggarly elements of the world to consume even the fatness of that which Yahweh has provided even unto the house of Yisraeli. Because it is those things, those things that are ill, those things that are not favored of Almighty Yahweh, those things that have been, that pollute and that disturbs Yisraeli. It's those things that takes the nourishment that we as a house of Israel that we need in these last and evil days. So even this famine is more than just a famine of bread. But it's a famine of the spiritual realm and the Ruach Yisrael. If we continue to partake of those things that are ill and well favored, we're not going to receive of the fatness of Almighty Yahweh. Those things are we allow those things to consume Imuna, to consume the Torah, the Mishpah of Almighty Yahweh, his strength out of our hearts, Yisrael. And what do we find? Let me read on. Hallelujah. Let me read on. I tell you what, let's do this, Yisrael. I want to go to, uh, to Helium. Chapter 1, chapter 106, verse 6. I want to show us something here in Tehillim concerning this leanness. In the Hebrew, it's called Razi. It's leanness. It's a type of wasting. Wasting away, pining away, Yisrael. We should not, as a people at this time, we should not be lean. There should not be a wasting in our hearts and in our lives, Israel. We should be fat with the promises, with the riches of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. To Helium 106 and verse 6. This is concerning the sins of Israel. Both we and our fathers, we have sinned. We have fallen short before Almighty Yahweh. And we have committed iniquity. And we have done wickedly. Our fathers understood not the wonders in Mizraim, what Yahweh had done. Yes. They remembered not the multitude of your miracles. Mm -hmm. Do we forget Yahweh and what he has done for us, Yisrael? Yes. How he has brought us out? Yes. How he has cleansed us? How he has washed us? His mighty miracles yes. that he has wrought in our lives? But to provoke you at the sea and even at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them. For his name's sake, yes, he that he might make his mighty power to be known. Yes. He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it was dried up. So and he led them through the depths mm -hmm. as through the wilderness. Yes. And he saved them from the hand of him that hated him, mm -hmm. and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. Yes, and the waters, they covered their enemies, and was not one of them left. Then believed they his words, saying, and they sang of his praises. And look what it says in verse 13, which we do so many times, Israel. Yeah. And they soon forgot yeah. his words. Yeah. And they waited not for his counsel. Yes. Why was that, Israel? Yeah. It's because of the leanness that was in the nephesh mm -hmm. of the house of Israel. And this is what leanness will cause you to do in verse 14. But they lusted exceedingly. They lusted exceedingly. Do we not recall when Yisrael 
lusted after the meat of Mizraim, of Egypt, yes. of the flesh pots, the things that plead the flesh, that they were used to, the leeks and their garlics, Israel. Yes. And yet Yahweh at one point gave them what they asked for. Mm -hmm. But yet in return, they received leanness and the nephesh. Anytime you see one, someone that is lean, and I'm talking about that type of sick leanness yes. in the bodies, it's, it, it's, very, it's seen because of the weight loss, because of, of the weakness, Israel, yes. even in the example that we see in the kin, yes. and those that was well-favored and fat, and those that was ill mm -hmm. and not well-favored, Israel. Yes. We find this even in the letters of Israel, yes. even our own hearts, Israel. Yes. And it should not be in this time. And it should trouble us. It troubled Pharaoh. Even though he did not understand the depth of that dream, it troubled him. Verse 14. But they lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted Yahweh in the desert. So he gave them their request, it says here. But he sent leanness into the nephesh. He sent leanness. We cannot continually operate under the lust and the desires of the flesh, Israel. Yeah. That would cause you to forget all that Yahweh has done for us. Yeah. Right. And even if you did possess that which you wanted, that thing that you desired, even if Yahweh did provide that, yes. that thing, whatever it may be, yet there will be a leanness that will be felt even in the nephesh, in the soul. And we cannot go in this spiritual walk and in this battle being lean, Israel. Yeah. We must be fat. Yeah. There's one that knows how to make us fat. Yeah. That knows exactly what to give us and to give our nephesh, Israel, yeah, that we not be lean. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let's back up a little in Eo, another example of the leanness as Eo speak even in his trials and even in his temptations. Eo chapter 16, verse 6. This is as he is speaking unto those that sat with him, that spent time with him, his friends, yes. his Rayach. Yes. Yes. He says here in, six, in EO chapter 16, verse 6, he, th he says, though I speak, he says, my grief is not as wag. Mm -hmm. And though I forbear, what am I, am, what am I eased? Verse 7. seven. But now he has made me weary, mm -hmm. and you have made desolate all of my company. Yes. Verse 8. He said, and you have filled me with wrinkles, mm -hmm. which is a witness against me, he says, and my leanness. Yes. Is he not talking about the leanness, yes. his weakness, even in his sicknesses? He said, it rises up in me, and it bears witness even to my face. Yeah. So if we are lean in our nephesh, and we are weak, cannot that be seen yeah. in our physical features, and yeah. our face, Israel? Yeah. Do we think Yahweh, he does not know? Mm -hmm. knows. We can even look amongst, amongst each other, Israel, yeah. with wisdom and discernment, and no one that is weak even in their nephesh. One that is not walking after the Torah as they should. One that needs help, that needs strength, Israel. Yeah. It is shown even in the expression of a man. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 10, verse 12. And again, this is concerning the leanness, Israel. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 12. He says, wherefore, it shall come to pass that when Yahweh has performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and upon Jerusalem, he said, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the beauty of his high look. Should we be a people that is high minded above the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? Let you know Yahweh, he will bring us low, Yisrael, just as he brought this king. Yeah. Verse 13. 
For he saith, by the strength of my hand have I done it, and by the wisdom, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent, and I have removed the bounds of the people, and have robbed their treasures, and have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. And my hand has found a nest, the riches of the people, and has, and as one gathers eggs, they are left, that are left. I have gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved the wing, or opened the mouth, or peeped. He says, shall the, she says, shall the act boast itself against him that hews wherewith? Or shall the soul magnify itself against him that shakes it? As if the rod that shakes itself against him that lifted it up, or as if the staff should lift up itself, as if it was not or no wood. That says here, therefore shall Yahweh of hosts send among his fat ones leanness. That is talking about the household of this king. See, at this time, the house of Israel Yah, was given into his hand because of the sin, sure. because they transgressed against Almighty Yahweh. Yet it was Yahweh that placed them in the hands of this king. But yet, in his loftiness, he believed it was of his own strength. He believed it was of his own warriors and of his own wisdom. Hallelujah. But we know that it was Almighty Yahweh. So even at his haughtiness or his high-mindedness, Yahweh said he would send to the fat ones leanness. And under his splendor, he shall kindle a burning like a burning fire. Yeah. And we know what fire does. It consumes. It takes away. Yeah. Verse 17. And the light of Yisrael shall be for a fire, and the Kodesh one for a flame. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and his barriers in one day. That's what the Torah and the hearts on the legs of Yisrael, that's what it should do, Yisrael. Yeah. Even those things that seek to bind us, that seek to keep us, and not allow us to do what Yahweh has commanded us, and to walk in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, those things shall be brought low by the Torah, by the ish, by the fire of Almighty Yahweh. And shall consume the great riches of his forests and other fruitful fields, both soul and body. Did you hear that, Israel? Yeah. Not only of the material things, but both of the soul and of the body. Yeah. And they shall be as when a standard bearer faints. Yeah. Should the standard bearer, he should stand strong, stand assured. But yet when one is sick, and meagerly, he cannot stand Yisrael. He faints. Yes, yes. He faints. Yes. Verse 19. And the rest of the trees of the forest shall be few, even that a child may write them, or shall be even written or in the memory of even the children of that city, of, of that place. So we should allow the Torah of Almighty Yahweh Hallelujah. to lead us Yisrael. Not our flesh. Not our high-mindedness. Not because we think we have done something so great and mighty before Almighty Yahweh. Because if we believe that it is by our own hand that we have come as far as we come, Israel, Yah, then Yahweh should grant unto us leanness. Yes, yes. Just as he did here. And it's by the strength, it's by the moonlight that he has given us, Israel, Yah, that we have come this far. It's not by our own strength. Yes. It's not by our own might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Let us get back. I want to move back to uh, Genesis chapter 41 concerning this dream that Pharaoh had. Concerning this leanness, Israel. Genesis 41. For this is truly, even amongst the house of Israel, we find this leanness. The Ruach, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And it's because of the sin and the iniquity. Eat up those things that Yahweh has given us. Has he not given us Yahshua HaMashiach and his fullness, Israel? But yet, as Yosef was sold, 
So we sell Yahshua HaMashiach continually. And it was even by his hand that deliverance was brought unto the house of Yisrael. I'm not going to finish all this tonight. Hallelujah. But we'll get back to this because it's important that we understand it, Yisrael. Yeah. That Yahweh has placed Yahshua HaMashiach as being the head of all things, Yisrael. Yeah. And we should not sell him out for the weak and beggarly elements of this world. For those things only bring leanness in our nephesh. Those things only consume and bite upon the riches that Yahweh has given us. Our faith, our emunah. His Torah, his Mishva. Yes, yes. And we should understand, Yisrael, that as long as we walk under the wings of Yahshua HaMashiach yes. and in his Torah, that we should not be consumed by the things of the world. Hallelujah. We will not find ourselves lean. We will not find in this time of famine that we don't have the wherewithal to, to overcome yes. and to endure and, and, and to press on, Yisrael. Yes. We must be able to press on. And we can't press on being lean and not having the things, not having the fatness, not having the water of the Ruach. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And not having his strength mm -hmm. uphold us, Yisrael, in time of trouble. Yes. Hallelujah. We must understand that, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Let me read just a few more verses in Genesis before I bring this to a close. And I want to bring us a bit of comfort, Yisrael. Even though there are things that shall be consumed and that shall be taken away. We know Yahweh, he is our Rapha and he restores us. Yeah. He is our help. Yeah. He is the keeper of our head. He is the lifter of our head, Yisrael. Yeah. He is the lifter of our countenance. Yeah. We should not let our countenance be, we should not let our countenance fall yeah. because of the things that are coming Hallelujah. and the things that we see, Yisrael. Yeah. So getting back to the dream of Pharaoh in uh, Genesis chapter 41, verse 5. We know that he awoke in, in verse 4. And in verse 5, it says here, And he slept and dreamed the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came upon one stalk, fat and excellent. They were plump. They were juicy. That's one thing about corn when it receives the right amount of nutrition. And most importantly, the water is right. Uh, you see the difference in that ear of corn, than in an ear of corn that is not receiving the right nourishment or receiving the water, Israel. And behold, seven thin ears, and it says that they were blasted with the east wind, they were dried up, sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears did devour the seven, <clears throat> the seven fat ears and the ears that were full. Yeah. And Pharaoh, he awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass that in the morning that his ruah, it says his ruah, his very being, his inner man, it was trouble. And he sent and called for the, the um, magicians of e Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was no one that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Verse 9. And this is concerning the butler. And when, the, and when then spoke the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh, he was walked with the servants and put me in the ward of the captain of the guard of the house, both me and the chief baker. And we dream a dream in one night, I and he. And we dream each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was... And there was there with us a young man, it says a Hebrew, a servant to the captain of the guard. And when we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams, to each man according to his dream, he did interpret. And it came to pass. And the interpretation to us, so it was. Me he restored to my office, and him he hanged. And Pharaoh sent and called Yosef, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiments and came into Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Yosef, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. 
And I have heard say of you that you can understand a dream and that you can interpret it. You know that it's only Yahshua HaMashiach because he is the word of prophecy, Israel, that shall reveal these hidden mysteries unto us, unto the house of Israel. We know that Pharaoh, he was the one that had this dream, but it was of the order of Yahweh that the house of Israel may be preserved. And that the house of Israel would be saved, even from this time of famine, Israel. I'm going to stop here tonight, Israel. Hallelujah. And I will continue this, maybe on Shema Israel. Hallelujah. Because it is an important point I want us to understand. Even in these last times, there are many that talks about the famine that shall come to the land. And they want you to do everything to prepare the flesh, but nothing to prepare the Ruach. Well, we need to prepare our rule out, Israel. Yeah. We need to prepare our minds. Yeah. We need to prepare our hearts. Yeah. Why? Because there, are, there is a famine in the land. But the famine that we should be worried about is the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know that Yahweh, he gives and he takes away Israel. And we should barack his name. For he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there's one thing he will not take away from us, Israel, because he has prominent to the house of Israel, and that is his Torah. That is his Mishvah. And even those things that have been consumed, and the Torah speaks about that, by the, the, the palmer worm and by the canker, we know that he will restore all those things back unto us, Israel. Back unto the house because it is needed in this last hour, his Torah and his Mishra. Yeah. Hallelujah. I do pray that you were able to garner something from this tonight, Israel. Yeah. If nothing else, if you didn't hear anything else tonight, Israel, yeah. let us stand sure yes. on the foundation of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Because that is the only thing that should make us fat. It's the only thing that gives us health and it gives us wealth and it gives us strength, Israel. Yeah. If we are continually led by the flesh, it's only going to produce those things that are lean. It's not going to allow us to grow. It's not going to allow us to move on in the path, in the direct, in the direction that Yahweh intends for the house of Israel to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh. We do barak Yahweh for all things. We barak you that are listening by Ville Live Stream, that you stay strong, that we stay planted in Yahshua HaMashiach, that we not be moved, that we not be moved by this wind of doctrine. Neither by the waves of the sea or by the people, Yisrael, yeah. but let us allow the Torah, the Mishnah of Almighty Yahweh, to move continuously in our hearts. Let us allow the, His living waters, Hallelujah, to overflow us and to consume us, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I continually barak Yahweh for His mercies, for His ahava, for His long suffering, and for bringing us this far by Imuna. Hallelujah. Yes. Abba Yahweh, we do total to you for another night of this midweek scripture, truth, amen, Abba Yahweh. We do ask, Abba Yahweh, you will continue to strengthen us by your Torah and by your Mishvah, Abba Yahweh. For we know there shall come a time, Abba Yahweh, where it shall not be spoken as it is spoken in this hour, Abba Yahweh, but yet it shall speak continually through Yahshua HaMashiach that has been written, and by that Torah that has been written in our lives, Abba Yahweh, and by the Ruach that you have given unto the house. So let us be strengthened tonight. We pray that you would give Yisrael Yah rest as we return to our beds, Abba Yahweh. And allow your Emelah camp to continually be a camp around us to protect us, Yisrael, uh, to protect Yisrael Yah against the enemy. And all things we do, Baraki, we give you Toda and the precious. In mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do declare, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Yahweh! Hallelujah! Yahweh Baraki, Yisrael Yah. Hallelujah!